Whoop, 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 whoop. Five seconds, five seconds. It's, this was working two seconds ago, and now it's not. Hold on. Sounds like I discover. I don't see paradise up at all, all right. for me. We it's are for me, all right. Losers. We're good. All right. Hello, everybody. Slight technical hiccup. Welcome to New Amsterdam. Everybody's uh, favorite fucking. Everybody's favorite fucking uh, cyberpunk hellscape. So, getting started here tonight for everybody. Um, we are gonna open up. You know, with a shot outside of the club right um what's going on is uh you know it's raining of course and in front of the club two vehicles pull up at the exact same time there's one that is the black vehicle that we are used to see uh see uh picking trinix up and then there is also another older black limo um, it is uh, kind of boxier. You can tell it is uh, pre-1980s, right? Very nice condition. Um, out of the vehicles, one steps Dr. Jabbar Alphonse. Two steps out a group of people that we are vaguely familiar with. However, we're not going to get into that because I'm going to let Lucky experience it firsthand. First of all, it's about 10 in the morning. Who all is in the bar? And if you're in the bar, what do you do? Working. Okay. Naturally. Is anyone else in the bar? Um, Pichette's probably there uh, with a disassembled gun. Nice. Nice. Wait, is this the day yeah. after? Um... Oh, yes. shit. Yeah, is this the day? I, uh, I might not be there. Not at the club? Uh, somebody's in the, the fucking club? hospital. Um, actually, well, if Trinix is there, I'm there. This actually makes a lot more sense now. This isn't at the club. This. So we have two vehicles. One at the club. One at the hospital. The first one at the club is Dr. Jabbar Alphonse. He walks in. Uh, you know, um, Dutchman kind of look him up and down and then wave him through. Uh, Rainier also uh, following in trail. Right? As you guys, or as he goes in, again, uh, so Cachette, you see uh, both Jabbar Alphonse, who is a, uh, he's a, I'd say, five foot seven. You know, very lanky build, Middle Eastern, and, um, like, very well-trimmed, like, persona, right? Like, very, like, his hair is set perfectly, his glasses are set perfectly, his coat is set perfectly, which he's not in a lab coat. He seems to be in a, in a raincoat. Uh, mm -hmm. As for Rainier, slab of meat, massive dude. If you could describe him as a Roblox character... He'd fit the outline, you know what I mean? Um, uh -huh. Perfectly cut hair, all that stuff, right? Um, Connor will probably be at the bar, too. So okay. I'm seeing them. Yeah. Connor, you see these guys come in. Connor, with your trained eyes, this Rainier guy, fuck the scientist, whatever. You look at him, you don't, you might know who he is, you might not. I don't know how attached Connor has been to this whole Trinix working at Artiste thing. Not. But, yeah. So you don't recognize him, but you do see the guy following him. And I need you to give me some sort of role that's based on your previous experience as a mercenary. Do you have one of those? I'm almost thinking it would be my combat sense. I'm fine with that. And that actually would work. Okay. Uh, Connor, you recognize this guy. Well, not directly, but you recognize something that's on him. Single tattoo peeking up from under his collar. You see 
that that tattoo is a tattoo of the Skull Men. The Skull Men were a, like, they were a mercenary band, and uh, they were the guys who you called when the people who clean up the fuck-ups make a fuck-up, right? They are the premier, like, they're in probably the top ten of the world, maybe even the top five of mercenary bands. Identifiable. Matter of fact, uh, Cachette, do you want to make me a roll of some sort as well to see if you can identify them? Uh, education and general knowledge? Yeah, that works. sold to him at some point. Oh, this one of those he wishes he sold to them. Okay, yeah, you recognize them as well. You never could get into selling to them. They take only private buy. Everything by them or everything for them is custom made by corporations specifically. Gross. They've got Corpo money. rats. Mm -hmm. Of course, this guy isn't in fucking uniform, so it doesn't look like he's with them anymore. But um, once a corpo rat, always a corpo rat. Mm -hmm. And these guys are from uh, Artis. That's about as that, corpo as it can. Once a corpo <laughs> rat, always a corpo rat. <laughs> Enjoy um, retirement. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Quiet. Connor's just sitting there at his table and he casually just drops his hand and releases the safety off his cider. Not a bad call. So, these guys walk into the bar, walk up to a couple of the Dutchmen, probably say something, Connor, you got those ear augments, right? Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. I'm shipped to understand Dutch. Oh, yeah. But um, you know I know Dutch naturally, so. Nice. Yeah, no, so he says in English, you know, uh, Dr. Jabbar Alphonse there, um, the wiry looking one, goes, um, yes, we are here to, uh, uh, we're here to meet someone named uh, Trinix, I believe he works here, uh, if we could have a word with him uh, for a moment, and, you know, the Dutchmen at this point, they're like forming a wall, you know, there's two of them blocking the hallway, not fucking budging, right? Says, uh, one of them says, uh, like, first one puts his ear up to the earpiece. Um, are you keyed into the Dutchman's communications, Connor? Because that seems like something you could do. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So you actually I hear... even went and got their permission to do it. Oh, absolutely. That's what I figured. Yeah. So, like, yeah, you actually hear, uh, Ulf Hednar, we have an issue. Um, and, uh, the other guy, uh, says, um, sorry, uh, we're not taking visitors right now. Uh, so there's been an incident in the club. Uh, we are personally, uh, we are sorry, but at the moment, uh, all personnel are uh, doing their own job, sort of thing. And you see, uh, you see the big looking dude, right? Kind of crosses his arms. He towers ahead over both of these Dutchmen, right? He looks down, he goes, yeah, that's what we're here about. We're talking to the kid. And you see uh, Ulf Hednar uh, walk down the steps at this point. Uh, and just to re-describe Ulf Hednar, she's the head of the Dutchman. Uh, she is huge, uh, heavily augged. Um, not, not like borged, but like you can tell. You know what I mean? Um, uh, she barely fits in the uniform suit that all of them wear, right? Or, or black turtleneck, rather. She like She's bulging out of this black turtleneck. And... Um, she kind of like looks and goes, uh, uh, gentlemen, is there a problem? And they both kind of look at her and go, yeah, we're trying to talk to Trinix. Goes, hmm, one moment, please. And, uh, we're going to get to Lucky real quick. Lucky, you're in the hospital with Scav. He's recovering. Um, he is like, real like they've got him an IV drip he's uh he's happy as a clam because they've got him on some strong fucking morphine uh you know and he's he's delirious you know he's like um you know you get a lot of babe I love you like did I eat something weird and like this morphine's fucking great oh no mm -hmm. you know yeah since he's probably not going to remember any of this. Yeah. She's. Yeah, no. 
she's I don't know I, I don't honestly know she's probably kind of had the way I feel right now and mm -hmm. just kind of stuck mm -hmm. but I get a call okay mm -mm. that she can deal with not yet oh, okay you're sitting by scav and as you're kind of watching him kind of gibber incoherently every once in a while at you and fall in and out of sleep. You've seen him doped up. This is probably the most doped up you've seen him, but it's still pretty typical scav doped up behavior. Very lovey-dovey, very in and out of sleep, very like will stretch without realizing he physically cannot stretch, so he'll like accidentally knock something. You know. Right. Um, and as you're kind of watching this, you hear a knock at the door. Well, uh, there is a uh, <laughs> there's a hand cannon down at her side. All of a sudden, it was probably hidden in her lap. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she goes to the door. Does the door have a peephole? Uh, no. It's just like a wooden door. Well, synthetic wood. Door have uh, any sort of chain on the backside? Ah, uh, nah. You're in like a hospital room, so you know everything's I, everything's it's, pretty. It's weird. I figured they'd at least have a window, but okay. Eh, yeah, sure. There is a window. Why not? Okay. Um, out of the window, you see someone that you recognize. You see Onaga Toshikatsu. All right, let in the Yakuza's lapdog. Yeah. And um, you open the door and you see Onaga and he does a slight bow to you. and says, um, Madam, uh, uh, probably says, Madam Lucky, may we come in? Who is... And uh, dude's uh, huge, by the way, so he's blocking the whole fucking doorway. Who is we? You see... There is uh, one, there's two other people, or there's three, actually. There's two Yakuza kind of Yojimbo looking motherfuckers, you know, suits and swords, the whole nine, you know. They probably got pressed pretty hard walking through this hospital, but who's going to stop the Yakuza? And the third person would happen to be this woman who spoke at the meeting. And now that you're getting a good look at her, Go ahead and give me a... Uh, what's the sense motive of this game? Human empathy? Um, no, that's, that's what a person is doing. Awareness notice. Uh, yeah, what, human perception. Oh, yeah, human perception. Okay. Is this nice. the person I had a long, quiet AV ride with that uh, tempted me to knock her out of an AV? Yes, you did. You see, dressed in full, like, like she's she's actually dressed probably black dress with a dragon that kind of goes up it, and um, you know uh, a modest hat and some kind of like thick makeup. You see, what is invariably Amy a Coco. She probably takes a moment to physically look over her glasses, her sunglasses. Yeah. At oh, yeah. Amy. S sighs. Turns around and just motions. Yeah. So you guys, uh, you guys uh, all get into the room, right? And Scav is laying there. He looks over and goes, oh. Company. Hell yeah. Um, as he just kind of like lays on his side. And um, Onaga Toshikatsu uh, looks at you and says, um, Madam Lucky, it has come to our attention that there was recently an attempt on several of the members of your, uh, of your people's lives. Several of the Dread Pirates we, as the Yakuza, would like to extend an olive branch 
and offer protection free of charge. There will be no catch. There will be no favors. This is simply a personal favor that is felt owed to you by me. By you, she says, raising an eyebrow and looking back over at Amy Coco. And he, he nods and says, absolutely. For what reason do you feel this debt is owed? Last I checked, we collaborated. And then we went back to our separate corners. The last time that we collaborated, with no hesitation... You provided us with the goods that we had wished at that warehouse. That goes a long way. Alongside that, you may think that the Dread Pirates are something that we do not take into consideration, but you are a very important group in this city, and it would be remiss if you were to find yourself extinct for no reason against forces that do not involve you directly. Unfortunately, I've been dealing with nothing but politics the past two days. Unless you're going to tell me that you somehow hold the key to keeping Artis out of where it doesn't belong, I'm unfortunately going to have to say I don't think either of us can help each other. Kind of looks and says, Keys. We hold two of them. And he pulls out a small data slate and he offers it to you. Yeah, she'd take it. At one, you see the cyborg that helped you whenever the operator was attacking, right? The one who intervened. And oh. uh, you see her sitting just in a warehouse, cross-legged and meditating. On the other side of the screen, you see someone I don't think you expect. You see a sniper that you've met on the field of battle. Ah, uh, this one. The sniper that took off Felix's leg says, At a drop of a hat, both of these incredibly capable operatives will be more than happy to provide overwatch and logistical support towards each other and with the Yakuza to directly affect a more secure Overwatch upon Artis, upon your club, and of your personal domicile, should they be not in the club. For how long could I consider this favor? Until the issue is resolved. And he gives you a very enigmatic look at that. Well, she says, kind of... Settling into her chair. This is all well and good, but I'm sure you understand that I am... bid to have no contact or any business with the Yakuza. Of course, by the table. Kind of nods and says, Yes, we assumed that this would be the situation. Therefore, I believe that this ends up becoming a situation in which this is a personal matter of honor. One that does not need to be discussed between others. Discretion is 100% held at your hands. And he hands you a slip. And on that slip is a small piece of Japanese. It says, on this slip, uh, and there's a QR code. He says, on this slip is everything that you would need to dismantle the current state of affairs, or at least greatly hinder the current state of affairs of the Yakuza, at least in your area. We are offering you assistance. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, what impression am I getting when he says my area? Is he talking red light? Is he talking uh, club? You're, you're talking like New Amsterdam. Okay. He just said, hey, here's a bunch of blackmail on us. Is that, am I getting that right? Yeah. 
Thereabouts. Uh. Okay, something's going on here. I don't. I, am I mean, physically too. I mean, yes, I. I'm more than the regular Yakuza bullshit. Uh. Amy Akoko has been in New Amsterdam a lot longer than the Yakuza has publicly been in New Amsterdam. Well, she left after the death. And she wasn't here because she wanted to be. She was here because she owed E a favor like we did. Am I correct when I say that, Mira? Yeah. Yeah. So... Maybe she doesn't want to be here anymore. <laughs> well, she's back. Whether she she's likes like, please use this against me. Mm. He's mm. back again. One thing that is of note, uh, yes. Amy Akoko is not Japanese. Amy Akoko is Chinese. That is something that you would for sure know is someone being a shot caller in the Yakuza from China is just not a thing that will happen, ever. Just, that is... They, they, there are honor codes that will specifically forbid that in real life, in New Amsterdam, and that's not a thing that'll happen. But she's here. Yeah. Standing before you. So riddle me this. Is this a fucking dream? Or... No. There's gotta be some way awake. to make all this make sense. Um... I'm just too you tired are... to see... And as you're kind of having uh... this thought, because Lucky is also probably pretty fucking tired. Yes. Right. Uh, you receive a phone call. Yeah. No. She. Her. Mark. The marquee lights up and it's speak. Uh, madam, it appears. Or uh, not, madam. Um, Ms. Lucky, it appears that we have an issue at the club. Uh, there are two men here who are asking for Trinix, and I figured I would run it past you immediately, seeing how we have a, well. A contentious relationship. And uh, she kind of looks up and down and goes, uh, I believe that this is uh, Jabbar Alphonse and a bodyguard of his. It takes a little bit of effort to not audibly groan. Um, anybody in the room will know that... Uh, is Connor at the club? Yes, he is. Oh, I yeah. believe he has been providing overwatch on this situation. What about Payne Dexter? That's a good question. Payne, where are you? You're with Trinix. So, yeah, yes. Whatever Trinix is. Yeah, um, he is by Trinix's side. Trinix is currently sequestered in uh, the area you know he would be. They get five minutes. Connor is to escort them. Payne Dexter is to be in the room when they talk. They are not allowed within six feet of Trinix. Five minutes. Understood. I will relay these instructions. And uh, she ends the call, and it goes back to you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Toshikatsu is standing in front of you, mm -hmm. and he simply says, I can assure you that these agents are more than capable at their jobs and would be more than happy to provide you with consistent protection." There is no need for anyone to get involved in this situation. Mm. This one I am somewhat familiar with, she says, tapping on the sniper. Mm -mm. This one, she says, pointing at, uh, well, Suya. <laughs> yeah. She says, this one I have questions about. Probably looks and says, to put rest any questions you may have, this one, he says pointing, is one in which you have the sword of in your office. She turns and just... Uh, hold on. I have Suya's sword in my office? Yeah, you do. 
Yeah, you've had it in your off in your office ever since. You never returned it or took it anywhere, so I assumed it was in your office. Does anybody else remember there being a sword that I took? Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you had a sword because uh, you guys got her picked up, and the only thing that uh, Pain Dexter could scalp from the scene was her sword, because the rest of it was Emed uh, yanked her out like super quick. And we never knew who took her, so we never, well, we never had anybody to return it to. Exactly. Yeah, and you didn't know what happened to Suya until now. Yeah, no, she does a double take over uh, that. Oh, by the way, we have some raiders. Hello. Uh, Raiders from Strange Dice, uh, we appreciate you. Uh, we're playing New Amsterdam, and we're uh, we're doing some Cyberpunk 2020 in my own custom world. There's a weird deal going on with the Yakuza at the moment, and they just found out that one of their friends got turned into a killer ninja board. Anyway. Okay, you're gonna need to let me roll some dice and feed me something here. Because I still, uh... Um, fuck. What's, what's the, ah, well, that's not good enough. What's the, what's happening here? I don't understand. Free, Greek, uh, the saying, uh. It's all no Greek such, to me. No, 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 there's no such thing as a free lunch. They just handed us a shit ton of blackmail. Yep. And basically said, hey, these two people are just going to... Uh, I, I know they are. I just... Um... You, I, even with that role, you are completely baffled because this makes literally no sense why they would do this. This is, like, absurd that they would do this. It puts... Like, even if they are maneuvering you, they are putting themselves in such a bad position by giving away, one, one of their operatives that you know is highly destructive, and now understand why, and another one who you know can do some work because they just popped heads off at that big battle you guys had every turn. Just casually. Um... Jesus. Uh, and so, all right, what I'm, I'm trying to understand what the limitations with these are. Basically, they're like, hey, these are your people now. Okay. Nope. They're saying they will provide overwatch and okay. protect the club and the personnel they're in. Execute order 66. <laughs> That's <laughs> what my big concern is. Um, I mean, you could have the operative go over right now and just handle those RTs guys real fast. <laughs> just be like, let me see what they got. <laughs> yeah, it might even get rid of that one sniper for us. If we keep putting him in dangerous situations where he can almost die, then we can claim vengeance when he is dead. Yeah. Yeah, here's the thing. My plan is none of you know that this is happening. True. Oh, of course. Um, because I will have an actual mutiny on my hands. If... Well, oh, you think? one, oh, I'm making you deals. Think? I'm making deals with the Yakuza. Two, uh, you know... Two, you'd be working with the guy who blew off uh, <laughs> Kitty Guy's leg. Yep. Honestly, at this point, if you were to do something like that and then tell people about it, I, I have a feeling a lot of us, myself included, will side with Felix and you'd have to watch your back. Which like, is why Lucky intends for us not to know. You better hope it never comes out because it's going to be bad. 
like just... and this is out of the game i'll stop i'm sorry no 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 no. it's fine this entire game is a giant house of cards <laughs> it is awful um no it's awesome i think you mean hey there she is hello, hello. there's that there. coral you're muted. Hear you, by the way. Check your chart. Trying to get my camera to align. Ah! Here, let's just do that. I don't I want won't to know. Anyway, focus. continue. Um, Fine. So, but I also see some opportunity here. Because if the sniper's watching us, that means he's got to be someplace we can see him. I mean, at he the very least, we could see him before. We also know he has bullshit teleports, sneaky stealth powers. Yep. Um, Teleport, and eh? if Felix ever sees him, that boy will have such hard PTSD. He might actually go full sociopath and murder you first before the rest of us. Actually, uh, Felix would have to uh, prove beyond like a shadow of a doubt to himself. That I'm the one actively betraying him, betraying his trust, because let's be honest, I've got some trust built up with Felix. Uh -huh. You do. And I mean... you do have the benefit, at least with Kachette, that he doesn't know who this fucker is. Yeah. yeah. Um... Same with Omen. I, I feel like you were just handed a monkey's paw personally mm -hmm. i really do and i think that your best bet is just to put the fucking but monkey's he... paw down but here's the thing i've been handed a monkey paw so many times before and i've managed to make it work every time before you sound like a chronic gambler i win every time Welcome i go to the casino to what's Amsterdam? one more time no oh my lucky God. is totally get a help. gambler god Welcome get fucking to New help Amsterdam. Everything we've done here has been a huge gamble and in one way or another has paid off. Let me just let me just count the ways, all right? So, <clears throat> the dame in the bridge. We were completely and utterly outclassed, not once, but twice, and with one player death, managed 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 to not only, you know, survive, but get a nice payday out of it. Van Plan okay. went off without a fucking hitch. And by the way, we were driving directly through Rat's territory. The container. Um, we managed to get our hands on a ton of data we shouldn't have. And successfully kept it away from the Red Eye Gang. Uh, okay. But we this destroyed is, Zero Point. With, like emotional stuff now. What's that? We destroyed Zero Point. We did lose some people in that. The operator, we survived the fucking operator. Yes, Rowan. I think the thing you're forgetting is when you're dealing with a big gang like the Yakuza, the, the rule of power is you do or you get done. Mm -hmm. Also, I, just by just doing this favor for us, they don't have to expect anything. No. What they're what they could be easily aiming for is just you're gonna see them better. And in the future, when time comes to pick sides, you're like, Yakuza has been really chill. They've been helping us out, and they even gave me a way to get rid of them. So yeah, I'll help them. And I honestly, think that it's something more insidious than that, where I think they're trying to make us fight amongst ourselves. So and it's going to work. Someone who no one's going to know. know they're never is against know. us. Let's do one last thing before I make any decisions, because I'm tired enough. I appreciate the input. Yes, yeah, Amy. Well, one more thing. This makes me, the player, feel ooky. Okay, that's <laughs> it. I'm done. No, I understand. I understand. I am looking purely at the numbers. I am not thinking about this from a emotional standpoint at all. Um, all right, let's call their bluff. I want to see. I, I want to scan the QR code and see if uh, what they said is true. Yeah. You scan the QR code and you see that there is a website with a username and a password. At this point, uh, Toshikatsu Unaga looks at you and goes, Ah, 
we figured that something like that's my or that you might find some or that you might wish to look at it. We do not believe that that is there, or we do not believe that that is the right decision. If any of it will be released, it will either all be released or none of it. There are many parcels in this. Hmm. You do understand that for due diligence purposes, I will at least have to have a net runner look around to at least make sure there is something there, and this isn't a dead end. Understood. You should be able to ascertain ascertain the amount of encryption and the file size, or and the file sizes. You shall find that there is a large amount of files that are heavily encrypted. Something that even as a bluffing bargaining chip would be a massive boondoggle and waste of opportunity, money, and time. And you hear Amy Akoko actually speak up, <clears throat> and she says. There are two points to remember here. The first, if we wanted to kill you, we would do so outright, immediately, and successfully. The second thing to consider is that we are asking out of politeness. This bargaining chip was my idea, and you would do me a great dishonor if you decide to deny it, or to believe that it is some sort of falsehood. And, uh, yeah. Immediately, all three of the guys in the room look at her, do a slight nod, and they don't say anything else. They just look straight ahead at you. Mm. Continuing, because this is how the conversation goes. Um, mm -hmm. Lucky's not going to look at her, but when she's talking to, um, I forget his name. Uh, Onaga. Probably, yep. Good old Toshikatsu. Yep, let me actually just put his name now. Name down. Let's see. Unless I already put it down. You might have. Yep. He's a pretty Toshikatsu. important NPC. Yep. Right hand of the current Yakuza command in town. Don't know much otherwise. Mm -hmm. Brown noser. I mean, what? Um, <laughs> Remember, he did catch a fucking bow shuriken that, uh, that um, um, Suya threw at him. Just like that. Oh, yeah. That's this one. Mm -hmm. Well, this wasn't a borged up Suya, so it doesn't count. Um... <laughs> yeah, Brian's just like, uh-huh, whatever. <laughs> what? <laughs> if it didn't happen from uh, Operator 2.0, it doesn't count. Yeah, fair. And, yeah, she looks at uh, Toshikatsu. Um, and says understanding where your friends and where your allies are and what exactly um, <clears throat> things like this mean are part of my job to keep me and my crew alive even if that is someone I have worked very closely with in the past well a month changes everything in New Amsterdam, and I think even the Yakuza would know better than to uh, discount that kind of uh, <clears throat> fact of life here. And, uh, yeah, at this point, Amy Akoko probably says, um, Amy Akoko probably says, simply because you went on an, or simply because the Yakuza aided you on, an, on a, um, on an interventional mission does not mean that you have worked closely with the Yakuza. Currently, I'm, oh, go ahead. I'm not talking about the Yakuza as a whole, she says, and she does shift her eyes back to uh, uh, Akoko. I'm mm -hmm. not talking about any organization. The fact that this comes from you carries weight. That is what I am trying to say. Give me a human perception. We've already we've already discovered this. I cannot perceive humans. See? She maintains a steely gaze and does not break any sort of tamp. Mm -hmm. uh, and she simply says she simply says um, uh, what would she say? She would probably say you may take it or leave it. That will not change the outcome of this deal. 
only how uh, uh, only how much you are happy with the terms of this deal, and how much you are let in on. With a sly smile, Lucky puts uh, the paper. Uh, actually, she probably pulls out a cigarette case from her jacket, puts mm-hmm. it in there, puts the cigarette case back, and she goes, Onaga, I accept this favor from you. Yeah, and uh, he reaches out his hand for a handshake. Yeah. Yeah, and he gives you a firm but not aggressive handshake, and he says, Excellent. We will keep you posted with any further developments that we find. As for right now... Oh, and (laughs) says... er, Not condition, my bad. Mm -hmm. All I ask is that these two are kept out of sight, if at all possible. Kind of nods, and... um, he actually flicks you something on your phone. He flicks you actually an airdrop file. Hmm. Okay. Um, do you open it? Yeah, because in this far, might as well. You open it and your agent crashes! No, um, you open it, and it is two tracking beacons. You see one tracking beacon is about a block away from the club on a, like, 30th story. And you see the other tracking beacon is somewhere deep in water or somewhere deep in uh we'll say um deep in plantage um kind of around artis uh probably to the north of artis like right up here so yeah uh you see those two tracking beacons this is a good gesture thank you kind of nods and says uh, nods and says whenever the situation is under or whenever the situation has been taken care of we will more than happily repre- or we will more than happily pull back the members and provide you a full account that is appreciated yeah and uh, at this point all of them bow and uh, probably uh, Toshikasu says, um, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance on a more informal term. I hope we may do so again in the future. And uh, they walk out. As they're walking out, I think uh, probably towards the middle of the entourage, just so Amy Coco can hear. Mm-hmm. Um, Amy Coco will hear someone, Lucky, start to hum the girl from Ipanema. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, they continue out. And uh, Scab probably just goes, That seemed intense. Let's go on, babe. She turns back, puts her hand on top of his, and says, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. Yeah. Cool. And uh, we're going to come back to the club. Connor. You, uh-huh. <clears throat> you, Ulf Hednar, and Payne Dexter as well, um, and Trinix. You guys are all on a four-way call. And uh, Ulf Hednar says, Connor, Payne Dexter, I have, a, si- or I have something, or a situation to update you on. Okay, hit me. It appears that there are going to be two, uh, it appears that two members of Artis are coming to speak to Trinix. This has been okayed by Lucky on the fly. They showed up unannounced. Connor, she said you are to escort them. Payne Dexter, you are to keep them more than six, or you are to keep them at least six feet away from Trinix at all time. You are to stay in the room as close to Trinix as you can while they talk to him. To them, Connor, if you are to stay out of the room, make sure that you are ready to enter and to fire. Roger that. Aye, aye. Kind of nods and... Wear a fucking Ulf- helmet, Pain Dexter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so says fucking Amy. Hey, he's got a cowl, okay? I don't care. 
Put a helmet um, on top of that cowl. He literally would do nothing. Um, <laughs> but no. Um, so uh, Ulf Hednar kind of waves you over, Connor. Mm-hmm. I stand up, and as I stand up, out from underneath the table, I pull out my submachine gun. Absolutely. Oh, perfect. Yeah, and you you approach, um, and uh, probably the big guy looks over at you, kind of nods, and then looks over at Ulf Hednar and goes, escort? Or, uh, escort? She's like, yes. He will escort you to the area. He will be on guard at all times. There is also another escort. I believe that you, uh, and probably goes, um, you are not going to be making any sort of funny moves, or we will put holes in your chest the size of basketballs. Is that understood? And like, immediately Jabbar Alphonse kind of throws up his hands like, I'm not planning on doing any. I, this is, I just need to, I'm not planning on doing anything. And, um, Rainier just kind of snorts indignantly. Um, but he looks at you, Connor. He looks you up and down, looks at your gun and goes, hmm, nice model. I just nod. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the um, the Dutchman kind of slides to either side, letting you go through. And Connor, I'm assuming you lead them to the uh, med bay? Oh, yes. Yeah. You lead them to the med bay. Um, and, uh, Trinix and Payne Dexter, what does it look like as you guys are kind of getting ready for this? Like, what's Payne Dexter doing, and what's Trinix doing? Payne Dexter is kind of trying to make sure there's a nice, nice spot for Trinix to sit, uh, mm-hmm. and within, almost within six feet of the door, so they don't have to come in very far at all. Absolutely. Uh, Trinix, you've been told that Jabbar Alphonse and, uh, and there is a quote, his bodyguard, you're pretty sure you know who that means, uh, are coming to visit you. What are you doing right now? Okay, so we have to hide him. We have to turn the truck board around, um, mm. hide everything that is related to my brother or my dad or any mm. of that information, like Boy. super quick. I'm running. Just go meet them in another room. Yeah, that's what say just meet them somewhere else. Go meet them there. That's fair. You could actually do that if you wanted. That's. It'd probably be a better idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna you're gonna meet them in another room then. I okay. Trust you all to be big people and figure out how to do this. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You were starting um, to do it, and then Scene's voice in your head was like, "Yo, go get another room." <laughs> yeah. So where where are you? Oh, yeah, have other. I don't, I'm thinking a big open room, like okay, maybe like the where all warehouse the cars the garage. Are? Yeah, yeah. You're finding the garage. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you guys move to the garage. Uh, do you update Connor that they're going to the garage? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so yeah, Connor, you uh you escort them to the garage and uh Payne Dexter um and Trinix, you guys see Dr. Jabbar Alphonse and Payne Dexter, you've met Rainier. So you see Rainier yeah. walk out. Uh the big bad man pajama you saw when you first went in. Um so yeah, uh they walk in, Rainier looks at you and nods and looks at Trinix and Jabbar kind of Yeah, and Jabbar says, "Ah, Trinix, it's a pleasure to see you." I Yeah, make sure you just see him from about that far away. Don't get any closer. Rule is six feet or, or more. Uh these rules will be enforced because I can't have trouble. If any of you either of you so much as passes gas in my general direction, upsetting my delicate nasal passages, your testicles will become my personal property. <laughs> Love it. God damn. Yeah. And uh they um they both look at you and uh Jabbar says Trinix, you keep very rough company. And uh yeah, probably Rainier looks at you and he just locks eyes with you. Mm-hmm. Uh absolutely Locking back. Mm-hmm. Says, Trinix, is it um is it safe to talk here? Uh sure. 
That's why we chose this place, so it'd be safe for everyone. Yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, he's picking up that tone. He's picking up that tone. Yeah. Says, um, Trinix, uh, it has come to my attention that there was an attack um, that targeted you and I believe some of your compatriots, at least this nightclub, um, and a nightclub that I believe some of your friends were at. Um, we are greatly concerned about this. Uh, you are the quickest growing asset uh, within the campus. So we came out of concern. First question is, are you all right? He was doing a good job. He pointed at Payne Dexter. And, well, that one dude didn't do very well. But I fixed his head. Yeah. Uh, oh, side yeah, note. There's enough people that 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 are here that I could survive. I'd be fine. Yeah. And side note, Connor, you were on a job at this point, you know, probably like some kind of favor job. And someone came up with like some pretty advanced gear, got put down by your squad real quick. You know, you were on a job with like maybe two or three other people. And it was more of a, oh, that guy's not involved with the job. Why do you try to kill us? I don't know. doesn't matter. And, you know, one of those things where everyone kind of just shrugged and went, must be involved somehow. Um, when you got back to the club, you realized, oh, everyone who was involved uh, got hit um, to varying degrees. Like, for instance, currently, uh, Serum is uh, upside, or, or not upside down, he's, he's in the med bay, and with very strange bullet wounds. Uh, Felix, who had said he was going to retire the night before, is officially unretiring. Uh, and uh, on top of all of that, uh, you actually see, for the first time, you see Scene's van in the garage. It is like as much superficial damage as possible and some real damage. Like, it looks like it flew off a bridge because you were told it did fly off a bridge. Um, but yeah, says, well, if you're all right, are, are you sure that it's okay for us to talk? Hey, it's your thing, so... Whatever you say, I'll disagree to because whatever you reveal, it's your company. And he probably looks at Payne and he looks at Connor and he says, Well, if these men are people that you trust to protect you, I, I have some troubling news, Trinix. I believe the people who were attempting to attack these compatriots of yours, I believe that they were doing it specifically to get at you. And the other thing that I worry about is that these people came directly from Artis. And he kind of pauses, waiting for anyone's reaction, really. Stone cold. Yeah. So you don't control I'm, everything I'm in that cursor. <laughs> yeah, and what did what did you say, Trinix? <laughs> you don't control everything in that area, then? He says, I'm just a departmental head. I'm not even in any sort of... Well, I'm tenured, but I'm not in any sort of position in which I can make any real administrative decisions. Trinix, every morning, and I should have explained this to you, and I'm sorry that I didn't, but Every morning that we get up and go and do our job and try and build greater things for society, we walk into a viper pit. Artis is laden with internal politics that are incredibly dangerous. We may be a scientific enclave, but a brotherhood we are not. I believe that certain members of Zenith Diagnostics specifically targeted you. Potentially, they were trying to capture you and hold you at their portion of the campus and exploit your uh, prodigious resource. Of course, that is not something that we would be looking forward to at Anodyne. Matter of fact, we 
would often abhor that, but we don't have any hard evidence. We would like to, well, we would like to do something. Rainier here is a company man, and he's a company man directly from Anodyne. Rainier has been volunteered, and Rainier scoffs. Like, immediately, he breaks the eye contact with you, uh, with you, Payne Dexter, and he just looks pretty pissed off, actually. Like, Rainier here has been volunteered as a personal bodyguard. We do this from time to time whenever it seems that there are internal politic issues. Well, look at him shortly after he makes that and be like, what, you don't want to hang out with me 24-7 anymore? And he we looks had fun he, at work. Yeah, and he looks and he goes, kid, you are nothing but fucking trouble. If I had to hang out with you every fucking day, you know what I would do? I'd have a shorter career. And he goes, let's keep hostilities, and he looks at Rainier, to a minimum, please. Anodyne Diagnostics is very much interested in Do you protecting mean anodyne our anodyne cybernetics. Yeah, anodyne cybernetics. Okay. My bad. Okay, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Just no. Yeah. You're good. Uh, anodyne cybernetics is very much interested in protecting its assets. And well, to put it plainly and on paper, we would consider you as a company an asset. I would consider you a student under my tutelage, but such flowery words do not make it onto the papers of contracts. We would like to assign Rainier. Um, yeah, we would like to um, assign Rainier to you as a bodyguard. He would give you ample space. However, he would be with you everywhere you went. He would also be tethered either to your agent or, if you wish, through an elective surgery to a chip. Yeah, I'll we'll stick with the agent. I'm not too fond of putting random chips. No, we'll stick with the agent. Yeah, we'll go that route. That'll be fine. Kind of nods and goes, excellent. Uh, I know that this is one of your off days and that work is tomorrow, so apologies for interrupting any sort of leisure activity, but we figured that this was more important to handle now rather than later in case there was another attempt. About how long has this conversation been going on for? Uh, I'd say about two, three minutes, maybe four. You recording all of it? Damn, Skippy. Hell yeah. Always. Of course. And uh, yeah, at this point, Rainier looks directly at you, Payne Dexter, and goes, can I break the six foot rule yet? I'll look at Trinex. You sure about this, kid? Well, he's not very much of a talkative person, but he's kind of fun to be around. I get, you God. get used to him eventually. <laughs> You're such an asshole. I love it. <laughs> Hold on. Are you He's saying, such a naive uh, asshole. Is, is, oh, yeah. is Trinix basically saying, yeah, I'll always have this clear artiste plant with me at all times, making it impossible for me to do anything private ever again, including things that could get me in trouble, like all of that private research I was so worried about in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to take a... Yeah. We're going to have to take a break from that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, and, uh, with that answer, he looks back over at you, uh, Payne Dexter and goes, you heard the kid. Yeah. And, uh, he'll walk up, take a pretty measured paces. And right as he stands next to Trinix, he kind of interposes himself. He doesn't push you or anything like that. He doesn't move you away, but he's not afraid to get in your bubble if you're very close to Trinix. And he looks at you through these mirror shades. And you can just see this haggard look. Like, this guy is fucking... He's tired. 
you know, there's something about it. Uh, you also notice that his uh, hands, uh, very old and wrinkled. And uh, he says, all right, now that I'm your shadow, I'm laying down some ground rules. One, I'm not going in the bathroom when you're taking a piss unless I need to take a piss. Two, got to take a shit. Tell me. I'll pull out a newspaper or something. And three, I don't care when you eat. I'm eating on my schedule. Eat? Well, you think there's time to eat? I got two jobs. Well, I'll find time. Never mind. <laughs> and at this point, Jabbar just kind of goes, ah, wonderful. Uh, I, I appreciate your cooperation. I will see myself out. Um, my apologies again for intruding. I wish all of you safe and very stable um, uh, situation for the rest of your life. But we all know that that's probably not likely. So at the very least for the next few months and kind of gives you this total fucking, you know, the smile. It's like a corporate person giving you a smile where they're like, I'm supposed to smile at this moment. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Connor calls down a Dutchman to escort him out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, one of the Dutchmen comes in and says, uh, I will see you out, sir. It's like, yes, of course, thank you. Uh, if you could walk me to my car, I would appreciate it. This neighborhood, uh, not the safest. And, uh, yeah, uh, they exunt from the scene, uh, showing that there is, um, all that we've got left is, uh, you know, Trinix, Payne Dexter, Connor, and uh, Rainier in the room. And, uh... Well, I'm watching. I'm just staring at Rainier. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he kind of looks at you for a second. And then he kind of like waits for a second. And he reaches into his coat pocket. And he pulls out a granola bar. Slowly takes a bite. And he looks back down at Trinix and goes, So what do you do in a day anyway? Let's go to the kitchen and get something to eat. You kind of made me hungry. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you you guys head off to the kitchen. Uh, and I think now would be an appropriate time to swap to... Uh, we're going to say that we're going to swap to... Uh, Cachette. Cachette. You've been working on this gun. And is this the gun I think you've been working on? Uh, you are muted if you are speaking. One of them. Which which one? Is I have it... a lot of guns in the works. Good. Yeah. Okay, which gun are you working on? So it's a TPI uh, Vector Super, v Super V. Okay. Um... That's something that I think he, uh, the person who it's for, is going to have to pay for it. But I'm also uh -huh. just doing all the gun checks for to give it cool parts. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's just at the bar, and he's currently retooling and reboring a heat-proof or a, a heat-resistant barrel. So yeah. he has this thing completely stripped down, and he's like been taking measurements and is fine machining this barrel, probably like with a finger that is like the borer for it. Yeah, and Lucky, did you pass on that information that you got from Trinix's BD? Oh, that was sent to me. Yeah, or not Trinix's BD, uh, Felix's BD. Oh, Felix's yes. BD, pass it on to who? To, did you pass on the information oh, about yep. uh, the person? I, so I was selective with who this went out to. Mm -hmm. It did go, basically, a general overview did go out to the pirates, yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, did you send, because you, uh, the one thing is, so, uh, first of all, I'll describe what was on the BD, essentially. So, uh, Felix was ambushed by somebody with a plasma thrower, um, was lit on fire, and escaped by diving into the Amstel itself. Uh, or not the answer, one of the canals. Uh, he fished himself out and uh, got away because Felix is a motherfucking survivor. Um, he didn't, he seemed disoriented. 
Uh, so he went uh, to go to Ingvar's. And once he got to Nord, on the way to Ingvar's, he was ambushed by a group of United Front who assaulted and beat him up, leaving him on the ground for dead until someone came and uh, interposed themselves in the situation, left, and Felix picked themselves back up and walked to Ingvar's. Yeah. That's basically what happened. Well, so, have I been given the information of who that person is that helped them? That would be the question, yes. That's what I was uh, asking Gunner. Yeah, all members of the Dread Pirates, uh, which at this point basically includes Cachette, not in an official capacity, but yes, Cachette would have gotten it. Yeah, uh, so all of you would know the person who saved uh, who saved um, Felix. Felix from the United Fronts folks. Uh, her name was Anastovia, and um, she is a member of Dimakshvi, what she was doing in Nord, but it was very serendipitous that she was there. Yeah, so while he's doing this, actually, he's got his agent out, and he's uh, the name of the boss that I talked to. Uh, yes, Heim Fetterman. Yeah, he, he's calling Heim Fetterman. Okay, and you get... On his Heim, agent. Yeah, he, he picks up and he says, uh, hello, this is, um, uh, this is, uh, what was Cachette's first name again? Uh, Ezekiel. Yeah. This is no, Ezekiel. Elijah. Elijah. Yeah. yeah, this is Elijah, correct? Yes, sir, Mr. Fetterman. Kind of says, well, speak up, what can I help you with, my friend? This, this is concerning, and you're going to have to remind me that name again, because I just immediately blanked on it, because I'm uh, dumb. Anastovia. Anastovia. I almost said Anastasia. Uh, this is concerning one of your members, uh, Anastovia, I believe. Forgive the noise, I'm reboring a barrel right now. And there's a pause for a moment, and then he says, Ah, Anastovia. Yes, uh, to what uh, questioning do we have towards Anastov? One of my compatriots was attacked in Nord by our mutual enemies. And Anastovia was the one that saved them. And I'm wondering what a member of Demakshvi was doing in Nord. Don't worry. I'm not mad. Far from it. And, you know, there's, there's a pause on the line again. Uh, and he says... I was not aware that Anastovia was in Nord at that moment. Anastovia is one of the major domos of a group within uh, our within our organization. She has free roam to go wherever she wants, and she does not often exercise the right to tell me. Regardless of that, is there a way to get in contact with her? I would like to visit. Nord. And he kind of pauses one more time. This is a longer one. He says, Elijah, you are free to do whatever you wish, as any man is in this life. I will send you her number, but I will warn you. This is something that is dangerous for many people. One of my friends was beaten within an inch of his life for the person that he is by those kinds of people. And I told him, and I meant it then as much as I meant it now, never again. And there's like a deep sigh and you hear the clinking of ice in a glass. He says, I have sent you the details. And as he says that, the details hit your phone. He says... I wish you good travel and good health. Also, consider this a demonstration of my merchandise for you and yours. He says, yes. A demonstration is... will be interesting to watch. Apologies, you have caught me in the middle of a uh, meeting. Uh, I will not hold you much longer than... Yeah. Lahaim, Mr. Fetterman. Lahaim. And he kind of hangs up. And uh, yeah, you have Anastovia's deets. And, and uh, he punches oh, those in. Uh-huh. 
uh, you you call and um, it rings a couple times, and then it finally goes to voicemail. Uh, Anastovia, we have not had the pleasure to met, meet. My name is Elijah, though most In the know middle me. of you doing this, you actually are receiving a call from an unknown number. He'll, he'll swap over. Who is this and how did you get this number? The name is Keshet, and I was given this number by Heim Fetterman. You know my Heim? buyers. Yes. Heim is a buyer of yours. Heh, does not tell me anything. A recent purchaser. He has not officially purchased any of my merchandise. But I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about if you saving the life of one of my friends in Nord. Kind of says, I saved many lives in Nord. You're going to have to be more specific. Someone with bioaugments to look like a cat. Hmm. Yes. That one does ring a bell. Unusual. They were... Not scared of me until I broke one of their legs. Then I ripped out one of their larynxes and they decided that they would leave. Is she referring to... Yeah, to, to the or, United... Or to the uh, United Front. Yeah, she's good. referring to the United Front. Good, good, good. That's actually what I wanted to talk about. I am in possession of a personal, built from scratch ACPA, that is unblooded at this moment, and I would like to blood it. Um, she says, um, I'm not a murder fantasy. No, I appreciate no. your call. Hold on. I need someone who can safely get this into Nord. After that, I have no reason to keep communication with you. What did you say your name was again? Elijah, though most people call me Keshet. Hmm. What is your last name, Elijah? You motherfucker. Uh. Nahem. The guy who modernized the Uzi yeah. program. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Nahem. I admire your work on that press of the Uzi. Currently, one of the better models. Not the best, but one of the better models. Uh, I was very young at the time. Believe me, the Meganaw is of much higher quality. Hmm. A shield. A shield for those around you. Or a shield with a spike on it to bash your enemies. Which of the two, Kashet? A proper shield, even without a spike, can be used as a weapon. Yes. And I have made promises to my friends, especially the one you saved, that I would be their shield going forward. And if I'm going to do that, well, I have to know that it can actually take a hit. Hmm. The thing about a shield as a weapon is that it is crude, it is blunt, and imprecise. Know you of scalpels as well. Mm, that is what the precision that is what the precision engineered laser targeted MG3 in the arm is for. There's a pause for a second. She says I have a warehouse in Zeeburg. You're to meet me there, five o'clock sharp today. You're to bring three demonstration models, including the suit. I don't care how you get it here. On top of that, you should be ready to be able to fill out a requisition form for I might be purchasing. Understood? Perfectly, madam. She says, excellent. I will see you in the afternoon. And she hangs up. He's got a bit more of a smile on his face, and he, like, pulls that notebook out of his uh, pocket and just kind of toys with it for a little bit before putting it back in. Then, like, the finger he's using to rebore, he's gone as far as it normally would. So it does the whole, like, ghost in the shell extension standing out through, like, weird little contraptions and unfolding to finish boring the entire thing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And from there, we're going to swap on over to Cash. So, Cash, it's been, like, a day or two since the attack. Your face is finally healing up a little bit. Um, what are you up to? 
Oh, great question. I would love to tell you. So even though I probably should have been resting, I was not. I have been in the runner's closet living off of coffee and possibly cranberry vodkas. Uh, ah. I'm sure Trixie has brought me like food, which I have taken maybe four bites of tops because I'm fucking busy. Yeah. Uh, every single security measure that we have in place has either been completely revamped or is in the process of being revamped. Uh, passwords are changing. New firewalls are being replaced. Old firewalls are turned into red herrings because fuck, if you're going to fucking find something, we're going to see you're looking. Uh, tracers are being down. Um, I've also picked up a couple new guard dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I've slipped them into the system. Um, I've got alarms in place. So if anybody is even considering thinking about going into places they shouldn't be going, I get a ping and I make sure that, well, I don't know if Lucky's going to want those kinds of pings. So I'm just doing it and I'm just going to like confer with her later and she see what everything. she'd like to see. She wants everything. Okay. Well, Absolutely uh, makes sense. we'll say that we talked about it then. So I set it up to yes. where it gets, you know, there are two pings. There's, there's one to me, one to her period. It's just, it's happening. And then yeah. I'm also setting up, uh, we'd kind of talked about it. I'm going to say it. And then you tell me if I'm wrong or if there's anything you want to change lucky. Um, we're setting up tiered access. So certain people have access to some stuff mm -hmm. more, some, a smaller group of people have access to a few more things. And then a very tight group of people like our core group here, that the only people I actually fucking trust in this game uh, <laughs> have have top access, and of course, Lucky has uh, ultimate access, which I have given myself the liberty of also having purely for like technical issues. Like, I just you don't someone have to has to be there. Yourself, you remember? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. So, just just like a lot of there's there's like a lot there's. Just, I do just... I do love that, but that's kind of adorable. Just like. I'm only doing it because I'm the admin and I know how it, dude, you're a trusted member of the party. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool, excellent, excellent. Let's uh, see, the yeah. only reason I wouldn't give that kind of permission to someone like Trinix is because he would probably sign it over to Artis if they <laughs> asked. And I wouldn't give it to probably Scene because fuck Scene. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you're, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, Pandex well, would definitely tell uh, uh, Lucky about the deal and the new bodyguard. Yeah, oh, I'm I, already she already got a message. Uh, yeah, you get you probably, three messages at one point, but we'll get to you, that in a second. You will probably also get a message from Cash about it because, mind you, while I'm doing a security overhaul. I know Artis came into the building. I'm following mm -hmm. Artis with the cameras. Oh, I can yeah. hear everything they're fucking saying. Mm -hmm. I am recording everything they're fucking saying. And as it gets recorded and all that shit goes down, all I do is just fucking send that shit on to Lucky. Like, I basically cropped out all the shit that was bullshit of them just walking and there was no talking. Yeah. And all the important stuff, I'm just like, here's a five-minute video you should probably watch at some point during your day. And, like, it's just, I, I got, I have no more fucks. I have so few you fucks like i don't care if she responds to it i don't care like i'm just like well that's fucked up send <laughs> like, you just, also probably I got love artiste the... visits the club you won't believe what trinix does right <laughs> holy got shit wrong i love but it's how not cash... clickbait either <laughs> i love i love cash's new entirely paranoid self this is it's like this is stage three of the five stage netrunner hey, program so before you, you know this, it you'll when you joined uh, this cash you were like man lucky's a really paranoid bitch do you understand yeah. now <laughs> no now i'm just do like you understand now i'm just now? <laughs> No, I get it. Now I'll like, I'll make now a password. Not enough. <laughs> I'll make a password and it'll be heavily encrypted and 47 characters and they're all they're all unique and there's uppercase case, there's lowercase, there's special characters, there's characters on a keyboard that aren't naturally on a keyboard. And then I'll go, oh, that's not strong enough. Delete. And then starting over. Like, I'm just, I'm having 
such a hard time. And she's got like a cycling encryption password resetter every day. It just sends the new password out to her. Actually, she, she drags the Japanese did... keyboard out every once in a while. <laughs> right. Just like, this is not for anyone but me. <laughs> and then it goes back. And, like, and don't even cash, look at it. <laughs> cash, as you're doing yeah. this, you are deep in cyberspace. Yeah. But you feel a very sudden uh, a very sudden hand on your shoulder. Oh god. What? Yeah. And you <laughs> like see Trixie. Yeah, you see Trixie who has dropped a burger onto the ground and is like, "Shit. I'm sorry. I thought it'd be funny and cute. Uh fuck. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. What time is it?" Uh Do you even know what day it is? Um uh no. Let me check the language of no. the encryption I just used because if yeah. it's Japanese, right. it's Tuesday. Hold on. <laughs> no, I don't. I, no, 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 no. You need. Okay. It's Sunday. Are you kidding me? It's Sunday. Okay. okay. I. Can you take like a 15 minute break of uh, like for me? Uh. Hey, at this I... point, you probably get a text back from uh, Lucky. Yeah. The text is get out of the runner's closet for the next 24 hours or I will kick your ass. I um... have already gotten three text messages from Trixie telling me that I'm working you to death. <laughs> uh... So I will, I will see the message. It'll pop up in my HUD, and then I'm just gonna be like, no. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not saying anything back. I'm literally just swiping it. Like I, yeah. I swiped it to her. I don't want to respond. Like... Too right, much I'm work. Out. I, I can't. All right, you and leave gonna... her on red for like I, half no, a second. I Trixie don't leave gets you on a... red. I do the thing where I just Trixie see the notification on Lucky. my phone, but I don't open it. So it okay, doesn't yeah. even show Tri I read it. <laughs> She's going to send screenshot confirmation to Trixie that, hey, I tried. I yeah, told and, her right. to take you it see easy. Trixie's, you see Trixie's eye light up with one of her marquees, and then it uh, flicks back off. She goes, do you want to just like, go on a walk or something do we i don't uh can uh i smell i need a shower i should i could i could take a shower and when you say walk do you mean like walk inside the building because i don't i don't we shouldn't we shouldn't leave i'm not she's like prepared to babe, leave. babe it's daylight uh-huh it's the yeah. busiest time. There's a noodle yeah. stand a block away. Scav recommended it. They do ramen, apparently. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, just... There's a thing there called uh, the Lucky Special. It's yeah. Uh, it's the only thing Lucky ever orders. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh. Mm, uh. But that, but that, but that, no, that requires going outside. <laughs> yeah, and she, she like looks at you and she puts her hand on your hand, you know? Yeah. She's like, I know that it's not, what happened was not good. What happened was very bad. But if we stay inside, then they won. Um, uh, I'll go take a shower. And she's like, thank you. I'll, um, I'll be waiting down in the bar. I'll get you a drink. How about that? Something um, to steady your nerves or something? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, yeah, I, we can, yeah, I'm gonna, I, yeah. Yeah, she says, 
before you go in the shower, give me your deck. Oh, I it's waterproof. It's fine. I no, just I it's promise. not about it being waterproof. <laughs> what if it has what been 32 hours and you haven't left the runner's closet? You have eaten six bites of food and you have killed eight cranberry vodkas and 12 energy drinks. Uh, that's not as many as I thought it would be. I feel like that's a that's a that's a positive. Luna. That's yes. <laughs> I need the deck. Please. Uh, I'm gonna take off the deck and I'm gonna hand it to her, but it's like painting me. Yeah, and so, she grabs the deck. Mm -hmm. Are you guys actually engaged, or did she like adopt you or something? Because right <laughs> <I> now, mean, <laughs> it's a little it above. That's how it be sometimes. That's how it be. Mommy, sometimes. sorry. Mommy, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And Amy she, over here role playing a hot mess successfully. Right. It's honestly, it just feels far too too real. <laughs> yeah. Just put her husband in that and like swap her husband and uh Trixie and you pretty much got what's going on in real life. Honestly, that's true, because he'll be like, babe, you have to stop working. And I'm like, it's fine, I'm almost done. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So she'll she'll take the um she'll take the the deck and she'll very carefully place it in her bag, you know, making sure she doesn't damage it. Um, even though you know that bitch is sturdy, you know what I right, mean? Right, no, it's great. And like it um, itches, like my arm itches because I haven't taken it off, and I'm just like, oh, I need to wash it. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, go take a shower, I'll be at the bar, I'll grab us something that isn't going to make you flip out. Um she's oh, like, yeah. uh, yeah, she's like, just take your time in the shower. It's okay. okay. It's gonna oh, be all yeah. right. Sure. Here. All right. Yeah. It's gonna be totally fine. Everything's great. Yeah. And she she like gives you a huge fucking hug. She's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, she gives you like this huge hug wordlessly and just holds you for a while. I will accept that hug and give it back. <laughs> Cause I'm yeah. just like, oh. Oh, you're my person, and I forgot you existed for 36 hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> life got in the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, she kind of like she 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 lets the hug ha or well, she hugs you for a good like 30 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. And then she like whispers in your ear, Hey, you smell really bad. I figured I should tell you as like a friend and also your fiance. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. You know, you yeah. say that I haven't left this runner's closet for any reason. There is not a bathroom in here, so I definitely left for that. But I got to tell you, I should probably just be drink drinking straight you, cranberry well, juice for a while. Because I held it for too long. That's a good question, though, <laughs> because uh, there is a thing for that. A lot is of net runners use catheters uh, and colostomy bags. Uh, especially I, for deep dives. I when you're in, in this moment, go uh -huh. ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, when you're in virtual space, uh, it's real easy to lose control of meat space functions. Uh, yeah. A lot of times, netrunners' eyes will flutter like uncontrollably. They'll move their mouths. They'll shift their body a whole bunch, and they're not hooked up to something. I mean, there's a reason that those suits are rubber. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I think that in this instance, because she's not doing deep dives, she's just doing security protocols. Yeah. It never really occurred to her to like yeah. handle that because you're going to yeah. be here a while. I, right. I think she was just like, I'm just going to do this real fast and real fast turned into almost 40 hours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Shit happens, um, but yeah. not on me today. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. Um uh, there there is a bathroom downstairs anyway, so yeah. Probably yeah, so just popped into the in the the employee bathroom or whatever. Right. I think that in that moment, I feel like if anybody saw Cash, you'd see her like zip into the bathroom, zip back out, and people would be like, Did she wash her hands? 
Like yeah, that yeah. was not enough time. Did that bitch wash her hands? Right. <laughs> like that's so bad. I know. But oh I yeah. Like no, I I feel no. That's very human. That's very real for like. Hey, welcome to like a cyberpunk setting in which someone has just had a heinous amount of control taken away from them while also having several, like pretty much everyone in the group, they like about to like get almost killed. Yeah. Assassination yeah. attempts. The only person they yeah. didn't target was Lucky. And yeah. they targeted no. Skev. But also Lucky was being a stick in the mud, which is probably also why she had the least opportunity to have anything happen to her. Mm-hmm. Did I just make a good case for being a stick in the mud? Mm-hmm. Ah. Yes, I you don't did. regret it. Um, but yeah, so Cash, you you get your your personal hygiene stuff taken care of and all that good right. stuff. Um, yeah, and you you head um, back down to the bar, and uh, Trixie has uh, a, two containers by her. One is a pitcher of water. And the other one is a tall glass of like red, um, like a uh, like it, it looks like probably a big cranberry vodka, but maybe minus the vodka. And right. she's like, right. she's like, you drink at least two glasses of this and all of that. Drink all that right now. Drink a glass of this, and then we'll walk over. We'll come back. You'll need to go to the bathroom like crazy, and then you'll finish the rest of that pitcher of water. Once you're done with that pitcher of water. You can go back to doing your thing. Okay. Okay. And she's going to fucking inhale the cranberry juice. Like, did she breathe? We don't know. Just yeah, yeah. Lay him it down on the counter and be like, let's go get some food. Yeah. Um, if I and, were there, uh, I yeah. would physically be locking you out of the runner's closet right now. But I'm <laughs> oh, don't worry. Not. Trixie has had ample time to do that. No, very good. Um, no. So, uh, yeah, you guys walk down the street, and uh, Cash, there's a lot of people out right now. I don't know how Cash is feeling right now. It's shitty and drizzly, you know? Um, yeah. And there's, like, it's it's the typical New Amsterdam, especially because you're in red light, so it's, like, kind of a sleazier kind of group of people and, like, mm-hmm. a lot, like, seedier kind of groups of people, you know? Um, there are some right. tourists, but they're, like, you know, sex and drug tourists as opposed to, like, you know, like, I'm here to see the, the nice things that Amsterdam has to offer. They're like, no, I want to I want to go to Club Fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, how is Cash reacting to being, like, outside with all these people? Well, she put on a jacket, and mm-hmm. under the jacket is a holster. And uh-huh. she's basically got her hand in her jacket the uh-huh. entire time. Yeah. And I'm just and- like... Head on a fucking swivel. It's rough. Yeah, and probably at some point, like about halfway to the journey, like Trixie looks back at you and goes, uh, and goes, uh, if you look any more conspicuous, they're gonna think that you're trying to uh trying to kidnap me or something. Not that I would mind I mean, you kidnapping me. I is that something that you wanna do? We could do that. Can no, you do that in a building, in our building? Wait, no, that's safe? not that, hold on. And she's like, she's like, come on, let's go, you know, and like, she kind of drags you along and you get to this shitty little ramen stand, right? It's on the edge, you know, Um, there's, there's a bunch of people gathered around it because it's, 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 you know, during like kind of the rush hour, you know, Uh Uh, and she's like, here, I can order. What do you want? Uh, I don't know. Lucky eats her all the time. What does she eat? Uh, she gets the lucky special. I it doesn't even have a recipe for what it is on here. I, I'm gonna get it. just literally Scav has just gone there so many times at this point. He just tells him, "I'll take Lucky's special." Yeah. Uh, go, does Lucky oh, even yeah. know what's in Lucky's special? <laughs> Fuck no. Yeah. Uh, it is, <laughs> is it uh, good. I will. Yes, I'll actually give you guys because I this is the actual recipe that I like to use in real life. It's tonkatsu bro. Tonkatsu bone broth, like pork bone broth, with double garlic, uh, or double black garlic and extra egg. I like it. I'm living mm. for it. I need the yeah. lucky special. Yeah. Um, she'll she'll be like, all right, I'll get that. I'll I'll grab one myself. We'll see what the whole fucking what the whole fuss is about. I see her eating that shit in her office all the time. You I know. know. 
I know. Uh, I bet you she doesn't even know what's in it herself. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> and she walks forward and Cash, make me an awareness notice check. Oh no! Hold on, I don't have my character sheet open because I'm a loser. <laughs> awareness notice. <laughs> How'd it go? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, all right. Damn. That's not bad. Oh, for, that. a non, for a non solo. Damn. No, that's I impressive. Know. So, yeah. Cash, um, I wasn't going to give you a success on this, but you pulled a fucking 31. I did. Uh, I was just going to say it feels like you're being watched. But I've got something a little different for you. Okay. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. Uh You get this excessive paranoid feeling and you think it's probably like you, you don't know where you're tracing it back to, but you look around and you catch just for the half glimpse. You swear you see that sniper. From the raid. Okay, so I am going to just, I'm going to just, I'm going to walk up to Trixie. Yeah. Very calmly. And and you walk up and it takes you a second to find Trixie. There's so many people and maybe a group of tourists with cameras are coming by photographing the waterfront, you know, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And kind of like getting in your way and that sort of thing. Right. At They're that American point, tourists, I, I, so they get in your way and then stop. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna like Bob and That's weed true. to find her. Do I find her? You find her, but it takes uncomfort. It probably takes you like 30 seconds because you like go up to the cart and she's not at the cart, right? Okay. And then you kind of yeah. like turn around and you look around and you don't see her. And then maybe there's a moment where you start to freak out just a little on the inside, and you yeah. hear Trixie like. Hey, dummy, I'm over here. And like, ah. you see, she's kind of like sitting at the very waterfront, kind of past the cart. Right. Hi. Did you already order? Yeah, I'm just waiting here for them to get us our food, babe. Why? Okay, we're leaving. We're going to walk back to. No, listen, listen. I love you. Listen. We're going to walk back to Tartarus. We're going to walk back super duper chill. And we're going to pretend like everything's fine. And I'm going to tell you about it. When we get back in the building. And I know you think I'm just being paranoid, but I need you to trust me. And she kind of looks at you and she looks in your eyes and there's like a pause for a second. She goes, if you're wrong, you owe me five ads. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. And we just like, we just walk back as casual as possible. Mm-hmm. Did we make it into the building? Yeah. Okay. We make it into the building just fine. Uh, great, you know, great, great. Yeah. I'm going to, as soon as we get in the building and past the Dutchman, and I don't know, just in enough where I'm comfortable, I'm mm-hmm. going to grab that woman by the shoulders and I'm going to go, the fucking sniper was out there. I know I fucking saw him. That fucking sniper is out there. What? The, what, the one yeah. who shot Felix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fucking out there, dude. I fucking saw him. Well, I, uh, hold on. Think for a second. Why would he even be out there? I don't fucking know. I know. I don't get it. Yeah. And kind of like sits there and stares at you. And she's like, you're not bullshitting. You really saw someone. Fucking saw someone. You saw someone with a gun? Yeah. Were they pointing at us? Wait, did he have the gun? He had the gun. Yeah. Uh, Um, He was not pointing it at you, though. Okay. He was um, he was looking down a scope, but it looks like he was looking around the area, but not directly at you. He did look like so the passing glimpse you caught of him, you two made eye contact for a half second and he ducked behind a window. Oh no, that's what I will tell her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And no. uh she, yeah, and she's like, What the fuck? We gotta tell Lucky. I'm gonna have to tell Lucky. She's this like, is yeah, that, um, that, at the very least, that's in Vice's territory. They're not gonna yeah. fucking like that at all. No, I need my deck back. She's like, 
Just finish one more glass of water for me, please. Just for your own health. Oh my God. I will fucking like, I will chug as much of that as I can. Yeah. And I'm going to like stop. And as you're doing that. Go ahead. Yeah. And as you're doing that, she's unzipping her bag to grab the deck. Yeah. Just, just, just as, as much as I can fit inside of my body. It just to the point to where I might retch. Like it's just, Mm -hmm. it's bad. And I'm just like, is, is this enough? Is it enough? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and she's like she like holds up her holds up your deck as she's leaning over her bag. And you see inside her bag there is a lot of spray paint. Oh, have you did you Oh, did I miss the thing that you were doing with your friends? She was like I, I tried to tell you um oh, I'm sorry. And she's like it's fine. Hey, it's fine. It's fine. You know what I mean? Kind of yeah. like, kind of like puts out... her. Oh, go ahead. Did it turn out rad though? She's like, she pulls up a picture and you see on the side of the, uh, the new Nemo building, right? You mm-hmm. see, um, you see dev died. And then the date that the dev went down and in the very center, there's a like, uh, like a pixel art skull and crossbones. Oh, I love that. Didn't she say there was going to be a, didn't she say there was going to be a QR code as well? Yeah, the eyes are QR codes. It's so good. Oh my God, that's so fucking sexy. I love it. Yeah. She's love like, it. we didn't even take any heat. Fuck, we saw one of the de- or we saw one of the developers down there. He just yeah. waved at us. It's weird as shit. That's fucking weird. I mean, at that point, we were ready to fucking go. I already had my harness and zip line ready to take me to the roof and then base jump right. off the roof and then get into the river. And then from oh there, God. swim my way around. But he didn't do shit. No one did. You know, you just you're so goddamn sexy. I can't stand myself. <laughs> like, which, but yeah, your girlfriend was literally like, yeah, I was ready to become Jason Bourne for a second. Right. Like, <laughs> right. like how dare you be this amazing? Yeah. The audacity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, you're incredible. I want to go zip lining with you. Can we be Jason Bourne together? She's like, yeah, I, absolutely. Okay, we should do that sometime. Can we do it inside? <laughs> no, we can't. Unless you okay. want to go to Dubai, which oh. I would not like to. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I, okay, that's that's fair. That's that's fair. I mean, that means yeah. like being out for a long time, and I'm not ready for but that. But it, it's more about it's more about you know like the you know like the slaves and stuff. But uh, yeah. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's a problem. That's a you know what? We'll liberate this place, and then we'll liberate liberate Dubai, and then we'll we'll go zip lining inside. Sound like a plan? She's like, yeah. First Panopticon, then the world. Absolutely. She kind of uh, leans you- back. Your sarcasm is real. However, I got goals. So let's <laughs> make these goals happen. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Cash, so you send a message to Lucky. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. going to be, uh, yo, that sniper that fucked off Felix is outside. The fuck is that about? What do we do? And who are we fighting? Uh, Lucky, we're going to cut back to you. And actually, Lucky... Well, let's cut to Omen for a second. Omen, you are roughly cleared to leave. I mean, what the fuck are they gonna do? Tell you not to? Because like you're a fucking rock star. Exactly. You yeah. You're you're safe enough as far as you can tell. Yep, that's all I need. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Omen. Uh, you actually have received word. Lucky and Scav are in the same fucking hospital. Yeah, I'm going to go check it out. Yeah, you uh, head up, Lucky. You Do you knock on the door or do you just walk in? <laughs> that there goes a, your head. Does a superstar knock on the door? That's fair. <laughs> Lucky, the door opens, you turn around, and before you can shoot him, you see it's open. <laughs> oh, no. I might do just you still shoot, shoot him? him? <laughs> No, this time I will not shoot him just out of habit because. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh yeah. Because then we'd be out an omen. 
No, um, no, probably not. No, no. no I don't think uh, even I don't think even a, a Borg stopper would take care of him. No, it would because Gunner I have like no armor. Oh, Gunner does love killing Daniel's characters. Though. Only the ones that <laughs> fuck with my friends. Yeah. And and all the other ones too. Um, and, and when they drink <laughs> something that you're just like, oh, you die. Oh, that was totally my fault. Um, I know. It's still funny. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just like, ah, lucky. I heard you were here with your... I look to Scav, your friend. Am I getting that text at this moment? Or call at this moment? It's just um, a text. text. It's a yeah, text. You've gotten, now you've gotten three texts that Rainier mm -hmm. is going to be a fixture at the club, and you've just gotten a text... From uh, from Cash, that that sniper guy was hanging out near the club. What the fuck are we supposed to do, and who are we fighting? Literally five <laughs> minutes after the Yakers leave, and I told. Them, oh shit! Hold on. Okay, nope. We dropped some frame. Oh, we're we're okay. Uh, literally five <laughs> minutes after I told them, hey, if at all possible, keep them out of sight. Yeah. And. But that thirty-one. Yeah, no, that is not. No, that is I not understand. I am mad at the sniper. <laughs> For being Oof. incompetent enough to get seen. No, that is not his, a 31. Come on. Players always win. No, it's incompetence on his part. Fair. What? You, you're not going to convince Lucky otherwise. That's fair. Yeah, Literally Lucky doesn't not. know that a 30 rolled. Lucky doesn't know a 31 was rolled. Um, and then Omen walks in. Yep. Uh, I'm just like, are you both all right? I was worried for both your safeties. We're fine, thank you. Well, or I'll tell you what. The bill is going to be on my manager. He'll take care of it. It's fine. I've already got it sorted. <laughs> <laughs> Flashback to threat. The gun. The fucking Eamon. <laughs> right, I've got it. God. But if you feel like um, actually paying them, I, might, I may be able to come back here one day. <laughs> ah, then it's settled. Wonderful. <laughs> you're here. What do you want? I came to check up on you. I had an incident Why do you where. Care? Oh, you were the lady in black. Like I, I already said. heard about your escapade from your manager. I'm glad to see you're all right. Of course, the first thing you did was step out and make a proclamation to the world about this. Of course, Not the one exactly who attacked how I me. I like to deal with things. Was it? And he's gonna look over at Scav. And does Scav have like the same setup of getting the stuff removed out of his body that I did? Oh no, he had. Uh, he swallowed. They. They. He somehow they got him to swallow metal microfilaments. Okay, so they didn't have to cut him open and stuff. Okay. Well, they no, did. They, they had to the essentially. Beer. They put it in his beer. They put it in his yeah. fucking beer. Right, but I'm he so still had. Mad about that because I said it was okay for him to have six beers at once. He he still has. That's what I was asking. If he still had like the same like he's... surgery that I had to have. Hey, he's got a, it on his stomach, not okay. on his heart, because yours was on your chest. Like they had to pop your heart open and like do an immediate like. Frankensteining of that shit. Eh, not the first time anyone's cut open my heart, you know. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I look over like. Deal with this. <laughs> I'm looking over at Scav and I'm seeing like all this stuff and the pumps. And he, and... and he looks over at you and he goes, Yo, what's up? Hey, hey, can I tell you a secret? Raises an eyebrow. <laughs> no, come here. I don't want lucky here. No, you can say it he out approaches. Loud. <laughs> yeah, and he just kind of says it whenever you get close. And he's like, "I think Lucky thinks you're gonna be useful," which means I think Lucky thinks you're hot. And then just kind of like half oh. collapses back onto the fucking onto the fucking bed. I like pat him on the side of the cheek and give him a little kiss, and I'm just like, <laughs> not? "Who wouldn't think I'm hot?" <laughs> She's working on her agent, and all you hear Lucky is say. You want him, you can take him. He's more trouble to me some days than not. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and what I, do you... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I like I, I go to the uh, the foot of his bed and I grab the chart and I'm looking at it. Because I'd probably mm -hmm. seen mine. Yeah. 
So he didn't have pharaoh fluid, but it was an equally weird fucking way to assassinate someone. Like, who the fuck poisons someone by putting tiny little, essentially like micro flechettes in their drink or whatever they put it in? Hmm. This is very strange. What? <laughs> He's like looking to see you're not busy or not anything. Uh, well, here, <laughs> let's deal with those texts real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, Connors is nothing but an audio recording. Yep. Nope. Um, she's going to put this into uh, <clears throat> the group chat. <clears throat> That, um, Trinix, you're on restrictions, no access to anywhere backstage or, uh, behind, <clears throat> yeah, uh, no access, uh, backstage and or med bay until your tail's gone. I am Ooh. banning you from the med bay. <gasps> I am as banning soon as you I get... okay. from the med as bay. Soon as, as soon as I get that text, okay. I'll fucking be like, Done. <laughs> you have no access. <laughs> you have no access. <laughs> because I'm, not, I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. I'll, or I know what's going on. Access but it's like, denied. Yeah. Kashet definitely said something when she's like, done. And it's like, man, a woman that works fast is so hot. Kashet, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you were a spice, you'd be flower. <laughs> oh! <laughs> All right, and you won't be getting Ver anything cool. Ver versatile Christmas. and explosive? Yeah, what about that? Land you can use flour to make explosive. fucking bombs. You know, if you're a spice, you're nutmeg. Oh, I don't because... think she's nutmeg. <laughs> Mildly poisonous, she... hall a hallucinogen, and the British have fought wars over it. Hey, I don't gaslight my That's only if you smoke it. Comes that. Uh, By speaking of gaslighting, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to gaslight you, uh, Amy, because you can certainly try. Um, basically, she's gonna text back to you. She says, "I'm having Ulf look into it immediately. I'll let you know, or she'll let you know if anything comes up." Uh, you will get a response. Okay. And then Cash will immediately text Ulf and be like, do you know about the sniper? I was literally just about to say I'm messaging I Ulf. Mm -mm. No, I fucking, I, d I catch okay. you beforehand and okay, I'm like, yeah. uh, oh, Lucky yeah. says you got a handle on the sniper. Do you know anything about the sniper? <laughs> Ulf just sends you back, wait one. <laughs> what did she say? Wait one, wait, wait one, one sec. Wait one. Oh. And Lucky, do you send her a text? Yes. She's like, I've just talked. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Cash is reporting uh, sightings of that uh, sniper. Um, please do a, a sweep around above in the building. Rooftops. Um don't stray outside of perimeter because I don't need anybody else getting fucking ambushed because if they can, you know, if this, well, if the sniper can find, uh, Amy, uh, well, imagine what they could do when there's only one person. Yeah. And, uh, she probably, uh, sends back, uh, affirmative and then sends to you cash, um, uh, Lucky has in or Lucky has uh, uh, what is it? Something to the situation has ah, my brain um, has appraised me of the situation. Uh, I will be doing my level best to ensure that they do not come anywhere near the club. Uh, I will respond to her because I just I have now decided after your like description of her, we're going to be mm. friends, and I'm going to go. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And then yeah. I'm going to respond back to Lucky. Who the fuck are we fighting now? <laughs> <laughs> um, you're going to get left on red. Great. Actually, you're not even going to get left on red. I'm going to do to you what you did to me. That's totally Got fine. Uh, now I'm going to text Felix. 
Okay. You oh. you know. Hold on. Hold on. Oh fuck! I just want you, you to understand. Oh okay. uh, yeah. No, no, you made decisions. Uh, it's this. cool. It's fine. Once you made the decision, there's no going back. Okay, All right. that's fine. That's fine. What's Are you gonna uh, respond? To, okay. If you want to traumatize Felix, that's on you, not me. Oh no! Don't you gaslight me about this bullshit? <laughs> that's on you, you, not me. Honestly, I don't you. even think he's necessarily gaslighting you at this yeah, point. Like but what do you text Felix? I'm gonna text Felix. Hey, there's some shit happening outside. Please stay in the club. If you need anything from outside, have one of the Dutchmen handle it for you. I love you. Thank you. And are you okay? Yeah, he'll he'll send you. I'm all right. Do you have Cachette's number? Uh, yes. And then I will just zip him Cachette's number. Yeah, and we'll get back to that in a second. Um, and then yeah. Forgot. Yeah, we'll get We've back to and, uh, Lucky. Have, yeah, is there anything omen. else I haven't dealt with here? All right. I don't Let's think see. so. Let's see. I put out, put out one fire. Put out one <laughs> fire. <laughs> had somebody start a fucking fire. Um, mm -hmm. Put that out. No, I and didn't. Then she decided to go Not start it the Phoenix. other day. Now oh, that you've yeah. already texted Felix, uh, remind me what you messaged because I can get to that. Just stay inside. It was, it was just, no, please no, no. stay inside, me, and if you need... To me. What did you message to me? Oh, who, who are, are we fighting? fighting now? Who are we fighting now? Um, you're probably going to get an answer that you're not going to like, because it's just th three words. I don't know. <laughs> That's a real scary answer! Well, not as scary as all of them. That's also oh. a scary answer, and pretty true! I mean, so, all of it's pretty true. After also, it's scary. Is, back to it's Omen treason, and says, then. I'm sorry, I just uh, had to put out a couple fires. You were well, I want to say, it cuts back, and you, like, you kind of, like, alert from doing all your messaging, and Omen's, like, sitting there, like, holding a nurse by her waist, and she, he's like, thank you so much for the information. She's like, he's just had her explain what the yeah. chart said to him. <laughs> right, and she, no, that's so totally within your fucking realm, and this is already the weirdest patient, patient room she's probably ever had to deal with. <laughs> she just assumes the weirdo is friends with the other two weirdos, and just like, you're weirdo. also the hottest of the weirdos. Yeah. So uh, she's just going to tell you what the chart means. Which, again, to give you some specifics, they had to replace uh, Scav's esophageal lining and stomach, um, because Oof. he was completely filled with metal microfilaments that were all razor sharp. Matter of fact, the doctor who was first operating on him cut his fucking finger on these things oh. because they're so sharp. In fact, she says Oh, probably that's a lawsuit. At, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> probably at some point, she even says it is a miracle we didn't have to replace more than just his stomach and esophageal lining. Uh... Also, Lucky, you would know this. Scav has a little bit of cotton in his mouth from, like, where this shit cut up his mouth, too. Whew. Cotton is not extinct yet? Well, it's... Well, polyester cotton. cotton. Yeah, it, it's fucking medical cotton, whatever the fuck it would end up being that they would replace it with. Shut up. I mean, oh, honestly, I feel like in New Amsterdam and this, this time... Bamboo would be the replacement for a lot of things like paper and cotton. Yeah, like bamboo fibers. Bamboo yeah, bamboo shit, fibers because yeah. it grows so fast. They probably have giant bamboo farms everywhere. That would make sense. Or maybe like polyester would be kind of the yeah. thing. Like maybe more of a porous polyester because uh, like micro threading technology like does exist in this world where you yeah, can like, I mean, get down to the granular level of plastics. And we have something that's kind of like biofoam where you have those injectable bandages. Right, exactly. It's something like that. He's got medical gauze in his mouth. There we go. Yeah. I know, I just wanted to fuck with you, miss, <laughs> miss the details. Shut the fuck up, I'll kill you. Mira, Mira, you have to understand. <laughs> oh, let me do it, let me do it, let my character do it. <laughs> this, this turd has been doing this all day yesterday, too, so... Uh-huh, that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah... So, um, you've got all that information. Lucky, you see that Omen very clearly has all that information. I sent her on away. Where were we? <laughs> well, you were accusing me of acting 
the way I should act. I mean, an attack on me is an attack on all my fans. They must know. Of course. Mm. And so I'm what are we going to do? <laughs> no, no, he's not He's yeah. not implying you're a fan, but he's like, no, so what are we going to do about... Kind of like waves the chart and then sets it down back onto on. where it was supposed to be. First of all, <laughs> we aren't going to do anything. Well, I suppose I could act on my own again and continue doing what I need to do to make sure... Uh, Why do you care so much? I care because an attack was made on me. And the people that attacked me very well could have attacked your scav here. And he probably looks up and goes, I, I hate to tell you this, but I think they were the same She puts people. a hand over <laughs> his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I'm very well aware that this is a possibility, scav. You can just... Yeah. Go back to your morphine daydream. I'm going to yeah, hope just... that you don't get fucking addicted. Um... <laughs> oh, you're scared he's going to get addicted to huh. an opiate? What? Hey, you, shut the fuck up. <laughs> this is a happy stream where we're all friends and tell each other to shut the fuck up over and over again. I mean, I could make live. an... You know, Omen can make you an opiate that's not addictive. I'm surprised there are addictive opiates in the future. Oh, def. How do you think places make money? No, yeah. I, well, you know, take it back. Take it back. <laughs> I mean, so look at the tobacco the, industry the, as your. The answer is the premium ones don't have addiction. <laughs> yes, tags, the rich people. Right. Right. But Got the uh, cheap ones, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> but. I'm glad you find my response unacceptable because it is the only answer I can reasonably give you. It's the most <laughs> honest. Fine. Yeah. Because let's uh, be honest, even if I told unitive. even if I told you that the Yakuza showed up, even the Yakuza didn't tell us who the fuck is doing this. <laughs> All I have are my suspicions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And by the way, but I saw the smoke with the fire you threw out, so you know, there's that. What do you mean? You started a fire, and I saw your smoke, and you won't tell me that you started a fire. <laughs> you can't see the smoke either. What? I rolled you... a 31. I saw that fucking smoke. <laughs> oh, well, that's not my smoke. That's the Yakuza's smoke. Uh -huh. If you'll remember, Lucky was kind of told, hey, this is happening whether you want it to or not. We can either do it on your terms or our terms. Yeah, I didn't uh -huh. have a ton of option there and yeah. also we are not big enough to piss off the yakuza yeah because what i want to avoid is becoming the street wardens aka the yakuza's proxies yeah i but if one i have thing, to do go ahead one thing to consider is while most characters in this game are pretty consistently playing chess with their direct enemies and can know what's going on. Lucky has to play chess with all of your lives at the same time and not get you killed. She cannot <laughs> sacrifice that night. She has to play a perfect game of chess every time. It's fucking insane. Because and she hasn't thing. always played a perfect game no. of chess. No, I have not. Um, but you have to also understand... If I want to, I mean, fight the Yakuza here, literally, who do I have to turn to? In red light, I would have to turn to the Vices. And here's what the Vices are going to do. Hey, that's great. But <laughs> if we do this for you, this is a Vice Club now. Yep. And I am not right. turning this into a Vice Club. I understand they're the good guys, but they are not for us. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I, hey, you don't have to like it as long as you <laughs> understand what I'm okay, doing. Okay, mom. Okay, mom. <laughs> I just, that, the, okay, the tone, that you don't have to like it. <laughs> okay, I think I've said that to As long as you're <laughs> mad at me for the right reasons, we'll put it that way. Yeah. I'm not mm. mad at anything right now. I mean, my character is not. Me, the person, I, I'm, un, I'm uncomfortable, but not mad. Mm -hmm. Yep. But okay, go ahead, please. Um, but, uh, oh, uh, I suppose I should uh, pull up on the marquee that uh, those trackers to see where the sniper is. 
Mm-hmm. Sniper is um, like two blocks away from the club, like <laughs> two New Amsterdam city blocks. Right, so that's right. a pretty big distance. And it's like the yeah, it happens to be by the noodle shop. Just not like it doesn't seem like a planned thing. More just like yeah, oh shit, that's where that noodle shop is. Well, that makes sense. Well, I guess you can't go to that noodle shop again. Uh, <laughs> But yeah. that being said, yeah, she turns back to Omen and she goes, All right. You want to help? Prove to me that you actually want to help. Because all day, today, yesterday, and probably for the next few weeks, I'm going to be getting fake condolences and offers to help from everyone with the intention of taking me, my club, <coughs> or my people. <laughs> Just tell me what you need. Well, first off, Scav here. Well, I'm assuming his drink was spiked with microfilaments. Serum was chased, shot at with uh, plasma projectiles, and run off a bridge. And when they had the chance to kill him, they walked away. I had my best netrunner jumped along with her fiancé. And they took a scan of everything she had. I had my newest member jumped and beaten trying to help another member of mine who had to jump in a river to get away and was also accosted to the north by nord which is another problem i am having to um deal with at this very moment did i miss anything else oh they also decided to try and kill not one but both of my members at the club home territory They've compromised one of my security personnel at this point, and the, I have to assume is KIA, or at the very least MIA, because they have not come back. And I am finding out that they even have the reach to attack somebody on mission. And if it looks anything like this audio file I just got, it seems that the powers that be in Artis have decided that, for one reason or another, we are targets. So unless you're able to uh, get a cease and desist order against the whole of Artis, we've got our work cut out for us. Well, Artis would explain how they were able to get a stranger to inject me a ferrofluid. You know what? It's probably for a bullshit reason, too. They probably didn't actually give a shit about you. Just the fact that you were in the area. Oh, of course they give a shit about me. (laughs) (laughs) I love Omen. He's like one of my new favorite characters. Uh, I suppose the first step would be interrogating the bartender who gave the drink to Scav here. If you can find him. I'll see what I can find out. As you say, I think Ice Nine deserves a look over as a whole. They are technically underneath uh, no one at this moment. Kind of like us. But we need to be somewhat careful as uh, Skintles and... uh, Who's the other one? Um, Twilight. Yep. As Skintles and Twilight are uh, both in a position that could be called upon if needed. When you go, let me know. I will go with. Something uh-huh. else? I imagine that... Actually, I don't know this for a fact, but I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm already going to have one of our members in Nord. Having boots on the ground there early is 
Well, it's a tangent, but I think one that if we head it up soon, we could get backing for a couple of different things. I'm sorry, I'm talking city politics. You probably don't care that much. <laughs> He's paying attention. He's attentive yeah, to it. Right. I'd be like, as for coming with me, I know your rap sheet, but uh, how strong is your stomach? What do you have in mind? Someone who is a potential threat, not threat, uh, what would be the word? A potential, not sidekick, what's it called? Accomplice. Uh, uh, yeah, accomplice to someone who had threatened my life. Well, they've given up all rights to their own, I would say. Um. I will find the information I need from this person, no matter what needs I need to take. <laughs> She, uh, she, uh, grabs the cane, uh, that's been sitting by the side, and, uh, she starts messing with the little trigger, uh, <laughs> and she says, oh, stomach? For that. For whatever reason, in my mind, I thought we were going to go out drinking. But this is far more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there we will do one more cut and we will cut over to um we're gonna cut back over to Kashet. Kashet, um you're getting whatever prototypes which we'll talk about those after the session uh you're getting whatever prototypes you um you uh were wanting to get ready ready and you get a text from a number you don't have that just says, this is Felix. You in the bar? <laughs> He'd send something back where it's like, not at the moment, but can be. Uh, he'd probably be like, can you get to my room within 15 minutes? Easy. Yeah. And uh, he'll, he'll wait for you to get there. Yeah, and he'll show up. Yeah, you get to Felix's room. You knock. He opens the door. And uh, you see this immaculately clean room with the exception of one corner, which has several boxes that have a lot of what look like personal effects in it. This mm -hmm. room is very stark. Um, and it looks like there's several air. It looks like there's an area that's kind of uh, has like a yoga mat on it. And then uh, there's a couple weights in the corner and uh, you know, everything else is perfectly immaculately clean set to a watch. You know how it is, right? Yeah. Um, and you see Felix, who's wearing uh, not like the normal shit that Felix does, which you wouldn't necessarily know what Felix's normal is, but he looks kind of out of place, not in a skirt. He actually is in like BDU shorts that are a little too short, you know? Yeah. Um, and has a uh, like a crop top uh, that is also like a flat uh, yeah. vest. And he's like, Hey, I need a gun. Oh, he like for a sec, he like stops like he almost doesn't want to sully this room because he's covering like weapon grease and all sorts of stuff. There's probably like metal shavings all along his jacket. He's like, mm -hmm. oh, look at you, little soldier boy. Speaking of. Yeah. And he pulls out the gun. Yeah. He's like, Prototype not done yet. So far, I have given it a heat-resistant barrel, brass catcher, computer-assisted aiming, custom pistol grip. I'll need How to get measurements you for your hand. We'll get to that later. You said the answer, broke, just a tell lot. Me. Well, a the, lot base for the, firearm. Yeah. the base cost for the gun is 370. 370 eddies? Eddies, yeah. Okay. What, does but it go we'll... for like 2K or something? Probably, because yeah. there's going to be a lot just, of shit. If I just give you 2k now, pull it off my sheet, are we square? Yeah, we can do that. Sick. But if yeah, there's a difference in the cost of the gun, Felix will pay it. But yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, custom pistol grip, I'll, you know, I'll need to get measurement of your hand and your grip in order to get and it fine-tuned And he just holds his you. hand out without, like... Like, he's just giving you this dead stare as he holds his hand out. He takes it, folds it around the pistol grip, and is like, grip it until it feels perfect. Yeah, he does so. 
like taking measurements of it, like fingers folding out into multiple fingers so he can like mm-hmm. hold them in place as like markers. Yeah. Extended barrel, gas venting, high capacity magazines. What what do you want the custom finish to be? What would make it you? And he looks at it and he just goes, I don't know, is it gonna be able to shoot people? Very well. TDI Chris Super V. Very reliable, very accurate. Low recoil. Kinda kinda pauses for a second and goes, hmm. Can you make two of them? I'll pay you the double. For sure. And I'll uh, even see if I have any 45 ACP sitting around to give you as a startup. Kind of nods and goes, thank you. Um, and uh, probably he's like, uh, he's probably like, you in charge of the rain now, or is that st- or the range now, or is that old head now? I think I am in charge. I have never heard that I am not. And that is currently where my walking tank is living. He kind of goes, mm. is there like a log I have to sign in or something? No, no, just just mark down what ammunition you use and how much. Kind of nods and goes, awesome, thanks. Before you go, I have one request of you when you use a weapon of mine. Kind of, his ears kind of perk up a little bit, and he kind of tor- turns his head. You notice, even if he's very grim and not Felix at all right now, he still has these little cat mannerisms that are just yeah. ingrained in his personality. And he pulls he out the little of, book yeah. and shows it to him. He's like, this is something very personal to me. If you kill anyone from United Front or anyone else who thinks like them, you make a mark. This book's not complete until I have six million in here. And he kind of looks and he goes, oh, yeah, I can do that. I'll see if I can get you a few numbers. He smiles, like gives him a nice grip on the shoulder, probably just a little too tight from his shitty hands. And it's like, and there is. The one thing you're noticing when you're talking to Felix, you've only seen him once, and he was super bouncy and happy and funny mm-hmm. and goofy. He hasn't cracked a single smile. Yeah, actually, like, he opens his mouth to say something, just stops, and he's like, this, I, this is not my place to say. I don't know you very well, Felix, but you do not seem you. And he kind of looks at you and he says, um, and he kind of puts on like this big small and goes, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, see you later. No, he gets like real close. And he's like, don't bullshit me. I'm your friend. And his face flattens and he goes, you're my gun dealer. We'll see about friends later. He drops it and like, It's like, fine. Now I don't know if I'll give you that custom finish. And tries to give him a smile. Yeah, Felix doesn't smile back. At all. The range is open at any... Oh, go ahead. The range is open at any time. These are... These are like... yeah. These are keyed for 45 ACP. It's in the third shell... It's in the third drawer from the left. Kind of nods. And goes, uh, he he probably nods and goes, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'll try to get this finished by the end of the week. And he like, he nods and goes, I know you're busy whenever you can. And just nods, kind of looks a little, little deflated, which it's very rare to see him like that. He's like, yeah, Lahaim. Yeah, he, he, uh, nods at you, gives you a little half-salute sort of thing, and then he closes his door. And I think that is probably where we're going to call it. Um, Nice job, everybody. We didn't get to Cage Crew this week, but next week I think that we're going to get into a little bit of more fun. It's been a little intense the last couple episodes. 
let's uh let's get ready to loosen up a little bit but first and foremost let's get some outros let's start with Terenix. that was me apparently i pissed everybody off today yay i did my job <laughs> um yeah Terenix. apparently he's really important to have multiple people watch his back yeah, yeah. you're back that's what they want to watch <laughs> they don't want to stab it. Eh. No, we just shoot it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um. All right. What else am I in? Let's see, Saturday it's after the bomb. I don't remember. It's a Saturday or the next one, but I'm in that one. Uh, Sunday's Gloomfall. Don't know which Sunday that'll be. But when we do Gloomfall, I'm in that. And then I'm gonna say this wrong. Monday, the right verse into the strike verse. Don't strike. Uh, into the shard verse is it? Shard verse. Yeah, shard verse. Thirteen eighty-five. Oh, 1385. That's right. I knew I was gonna get it wrong. I'm in that thing too. I made. I found made a big old mech thing, and I have somebody else driving it. So I'm gonna help. And then, just see. You know, oh, and then Tuesday there'll be a group thing that I'll be in too. And that's all the stuff I'm doing. Nice, excellent. Next, let's go to the small amount of screen time for today. We'll get a little bit more into it next session as well. Omen. Oh, it's okay. It's really fun playing Omen. So any amount of time is perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, he does deserve, like, 80% of the screen time. Oh, of um, course, of course. We'll have an Omen oh, episode definitely. one of these days. Yeah, just whole Omen <laughs> Yeah, what up? You got me playing Omen. Ah, Omen's so fun. He's just, like, I get to be as selfish and as, like, just self-focused as I want, and it's great. Um, yeah, you can catch me here every other Friday. Next Friday, not this one tomorrow, because I don't think. Yeah. For... Uh, Immortal War. There we go. I was like, what's that fucking first word? Uh, Zamasa here, the samurai who uses sacred fire to heal humans and burn the spiritual. Um, my cat is going crazy in the background. Ignore that. You can also catch me on Wednesdays in uh, Beyond Over the Horizon. <laughs> beyond Over the Horizon. <laughs> Soon. As Gideon, the guy who keeps dying so many times and now has a weird thing infecting his brain so we'll see how that goes uh and yeah unfortunately that's all i'm in right now come here cat uh, and that's me nice okay next let's go to the always reliable always dependable absolutely terrifying connor mcgregor oh you're stroking my ego but yeah, I'm Brian. I play Connor tonight. Um, I think Trinix just made a deal with the devil, and it's not a good one. Nowhere near going to be a good one. So, yeah, I'm going to have to keep the guns all polished up and ready to go, just in case. Um, you can also find me on Mondays in Fire Shrek, Shardverse. Um, nice, nice little only soldier that's using the combat mech. This should be interesting. The guy get that done. It's been a weird week. Uh, also, occasionally you can find me on Fridays in the Immortal War playing a um, lovely little sort of samurai that, well, does not they want to go see the Shogun. That's not a good thing being called from that person. Mm. But yeah, uh, on Saturdays, you can find me running after the bomb. This Saturday, we're actually playing. Uh, every other Sunday, next Sunday is Gloomfall. And then this Tuesday coming will be a world of exploration, the GURPS game, um, set to a fantasy setting. So come on out and see that and join the, well, relatively small but interesting group of people that are going to explore a world where they 
Well, they just don't know anything. So who knows what they're going to encounter. And that's me. All right. Excellent. Uh, next thing's next. Uh, let's go to the wise Kraken. Uh, almost Merc with a mouth. Uh, not quite Deadpool. Definitely uh, dead serious and uh, dead funny. Um, uh, that's going to be Pain Dexter. Okay, I'm the computer king, the gentleman supervillain, and uh, yeah, I got to quote Con Air. It's a little known quote from Con Air, but anytime oh, you, you trust me, threaten someone to to that their testicles become your personal property, mm -hmm. it's gonna be funny. No, no, uh, no. I, I trust me. I caught it. Oh yeah, you mm -hmm. you've been researching for the Cage Crew. Oh, I have. <laughs> And also the Travolta team. It is hard to do a John Travolta accent. Because yes. he kind of doesn't have one. Yeah, he, he kind of doesn't have one. He just talks kind of high-pitched and nasally. Yeah, yeah, unless he's pretending to be um, Nicolas Cage pretending to be him. and then His Nicolas Cage his... impression is fucking incredible, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, on uh, every other Friday, I'm in the Immortal War as... Uh, Nagashita, who is sneaky and has uh, talked a couple of monks into being muscle for him when he, while he find, tries to find out what's going on. Um, and in the Shr um, Fire Shrike Shardverse, I am Lollipop, who kind of looks like this. Uh, yeah, he's basically a brain on a stick. Uh, uh. A very big brain on a stick who's, well... You haven't gotten to know his personality yet. It's going to be fun. <laughs> he, he does like riding his uh, uh, mech, which really doesn't look like a mech, but that's okay. He, he flies around in a flying saucer and uh, re does recon. So uh, other than that, if uh, you don't know your ass from your elbow or whether you should be spanking someone's ass or their elbow and you're an adult you should go uh, to computerking.buzzsprout.com and uh, listen to my podcast into the dark with the computer king where i talk about bdsm and other things like that and always spank those elbows with consent and that's it for me oh god we got twitch banned i'm sorry uh no <laughs> let's see uh next let us go to our newly minted paranoid android, our creep, our weirdo, our freak. She doesn't belong here. Let's go to Amy Geddon's cash. Hi. You know, this game is just PTSD. <laughs> like, it's just the best. Uh, hello, I'm Amy Geddon. And today I play Cash. Cash has a problem. Cash is seeing things, things that are definitely there. She is not on drugs. She might be dehydrated. It's fine. Um, be I bet you, right? Like, I bet you Homegirl lost like six pounds over the course of like two days. Like, there oh, was yeah. just, it's, it's rough. It's all water weight. Poor thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, let's see when I'm not here. Uh, every other Friday, are we doing it this Friday or next Friday? next friday okay uh next friday i'll be in the immortal war i play a girl i will remember her name but she's lovely and basically Izumi. me izumi she's a zoomy you're the best uh she's she is a lovely monk she's basically avatar uh but uh i've decided she has hair so that's cool and that's that's fun i'm excited i'm excited to to play that all the time and then on wednesdays gunner tries to kill us almost successfully does so or he gaslights us into thinking something's a terrible thing when actually it's an awesome thing but then now that we've had a taste of awesome he's going to be like oh here's another thing that might be terrible and it will be and then we'll be fucked all over again because that's how we go and that's fine because it's loads of fun and that's over the and uh and that's all the things i'm in right now but when i'm not doing that stuff i am also uh at, at my print shop you can find it at hypegraphics.co that's co and you can find me uh on a lot of socials that uh at hype graphics or at hype graphics az because you know it's fancy that's me uh i love side note i love how you constantly say like oh gunner's trying to kill us meanwhile i'm over here on thursday just being like yeah it sucks to be you guys 
That's I know. the story know. I'm telling. Like, here, have have I, a I, glass I, of ferro fluid. Yeah, right. right. I think I think it's because this this game is inherently dangerous, and D and D, especially Five E, is not really inherently dangerous. Like, it's very mm-hmm. difficult to murder characters uh, unless you know very specific conditions are met, or you know, <laughs> or, right, it's it's or the, is it? yeah, or the player acts very foolishly. Yeah, or that that is that is a thing. I mean, honestly, players accidentally kill themselves all the time. But I think that that's that's really like there are only a few things that can really destroy a character in this game. And yeah, like dog sized uh, termites. I'm you sorry. know, mm-hmm. you know, I just I don't like it. <laughs> are those rust monsters? Oh no, I was talking about Kythons. Oh I yeah, Kythons are great. Um, I am so unhappy and unrelated to be a fly on the wall after all of our games to hear these conversations that you guys have have oh my god can you just like fill me in because i need to be involved like (laughs) someday someday Someday. maybe not in the distant future you just have to move in with them Mm -hmm. things uh, will shake out where i am not able or where i am able to not withhold information from this group Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay Right, yeah, that'll right. be fun to see. Also, next, Lahayam, y'all, because we happen to have probably one of the best IDF forces and one of the only good ones. I'm sorry. Let's Ooh. gotta cut that one off Yikes. immediately. Ooh. Retcon. Edit. Retcon. Edit. We'll take it out and post. Let's talk to let's talk to Cachette while I eat crow, <clears throat> everyone. Hi, I'm Bab. So anyway, hi ho friendolas. My name is Rowan, otherwise known as I got me here today playing Cachette, who just wants to be people's friend. Yeah, everyone's just like, no, not my friend. You just make gunman. Well, Cash, Cash, you're fine. Cash, you've never okay. been mean to Cachette. The only okay. person who's actually been mean to Cachette is Felix. And that's not even being mean to Cachette to be <laughs> mean to Cachette. I wasn't very And nice. lucky. And lucky is the boss, so... Um, uh, Lucky, Lucky is a stone cold bitch. You can't blame Lucky, even though in a message yeah, she'll, 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 she'll like, like him when he, when he comes back with Nazi heads. Me, where I can tell you to shut up and do your job, than for you to be pissed at each other, where I have no control. Okay, the Michael, Michael Bay, Bay strategy. <laughs> um, I was yeah, doing it before. He'll, you just put a name to it. He'll Fair. prove he'll prove himself when he's coming back with like fifty Nazi scalps, because that's the mm-hmm. only way you can be his friend is if you have at least fifty Nazis. Um, you can also find me here uh, every other Friday, not this Friday, but next Friday, where I run the Immortal War, where there's some samurai and they're doing samurai things. They're going to have the summer festival in a little bit, and there's totally nothing bad that's going to happen at all. No Sir Rebob. Um, you can also find me here on Mondays for Shardverse 1385, also known as Megapalooza, where I will be playing the brothers Charity and Temperance, who are going to have a big mech that is... Uh, there to be big and mechy. It's basically a siege tank from StarCraft. Mm. Um, you can also find me here on Wednesdays where I play Sinel, who is angry that his fucking racial abilities fucked him over from getting poison immunity. Um, and that's it. All right, excellent. And finally, getting to our resident woman in black, the one who has to play mom to the group and who also has to put out the very serious fires of Amsterdam in the same breath. We're talking about Lucky. Come on, Cyrus. Let's see what's up. Hello, my name is Cyrus Smith, and today you caught me playing uh, professional fire putter outers, I think, what I will put on my business card that I will hand Mm -hmm. out at Comic-Cons. Professional gaslighter? What? Go ahead. Ooh, I can put that on the back mm-hmm. side. I can put that on the oh, back shit. side. And it just depends if I like you or not. You're Hey, if I like it's you It's just like flipping I, a coin. That's right. I am either your professional fire putter outer or I am your gaslighter. There is no in between. Love uh, it. Let's just say um You know what? We're not going to get into that. Um you can also find me uh let's see. On this Saturday and after the bomb, where I just want to have some vacation time, damn it. Not happening. Come on, man. I 
The world's over. Let's have a party. Yeah, winter's coming. That doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh. It's already started and it's September. It's always winter. <laughs> um, you can also find me. Um, let's see. No, I'm not in Mondays. I'm not in the Tuesdays. But that does bring us to the Wednesday. Um, where I'm running over the horizon where... I actually had to go to an ad break because one of my players did a thing and then failed all their death saves. Uh, That's me. I have no words. Um, You should tune in to all of our streams every week. All of them. And then on Tuesdays, the backlog gets updated. So you should go watch all the backlog. Especially since we finally got through two streams in a row on my PC where I didn't have to drop stream at all. It's a miracle. So, that's me. All right, excellent. And uh, that brings it to uh, me. Hello, everybody. My name is Mira of Mira Shades Gaming. Um, You have caught me tonight running New Amsterdam. If you want me, that's right, me, to run your game, similar to a game to New Amsterdam and other games that I've run on this channel, which you can see from the descriptions and all of our backlog on the YouTube, you can send me an email at... uh, mirrorshadesgm at gmail.com call me at 620-218-9949 because I feel lonely or you could even message me on Instagram at mirrorshades underscore gaming um if you want to catch me in further games catch me on Monday in the shard verse 1385 right yes 1385 okay yes sorry Um, I'm counting gun money no you're good um you can all uh where i will be playing the most traditional of showbot and i'm so hyped for it you can also catch me with uh you can also catch me on uh every other friday uh where i am uh playing hiroki um who is uh good old goku goki you know uh you can catch me on saturdays and after the bomb you can catch me on sundays on um on um gloomfall Sorry, I'm very tired, uh, so my brain is exploding. And uh, that's about all you can find it from me. Um, and I think that that about rounds it up. So if uh, we are all set here, let's get a uh, good old Nosdrovia and get the hell out of here. Nosdrovia! Nosdrovia.